You're very welcome along to our preview of the new League of Ireland season. The action gets underway this coming Friday night with four games to begin with. There's another on Saturday evening. And for soccer fans here in the Northwest, well, there's a buzz of excitement as we anticipate what promises to be another exciting season. Joining me to look at uh, what lies in store are two former League of Ireland players, Gavin Cullen and Declan Boyle. Guys, you're very welcome along. Hi, Jeremy. How's it going? Good to be here, Gavin. All right, boys. Well, Gavin, we'll, we'll, we can start with yourself. We've ha we've hardly come up for air, really, after the exciting conclusion to the 2021 campaign. But we find ourselves ready to go again. Yeah, it seems a very quick turnaround um, in terms of, suppose, the players really got a got, uh, month, six weeks off, and then they're back in pre-season. I just seen an interview with Barry McNamee you had yesterday, and they're back in the first the first of January. So... Um, it's it's full year round, and, and you can see why the league's full time because the players are putting in that much commitment and an effort to it. There, there, there's no there's no summers, there's no there's no breaks for them at all, to be honest. And and with that, Gavin, you know the pressure is on the clubs and the, the respective managers to to start assembling the squads because when you look r right throughout the Premier Division, you know there's been so many changes, so many players moving from club to club and elsewhere. Yeah, it seems crazy this year altogether. Um, I don't think in my memory I've seen as, as much movement or as much transfers or, or, or as many young players even heading to England. So, look, look, it's good in a way, but at the same time it makes it very difficult to to keep a consistency. Or, and, and the league's quite a high standard at the minute, so it, it, it's, it's interesting to see going into next season what level will be compared to last, you know. Well, Harps and Derry City are two of those clubs who have uh, seen quite a number of changes in terms of personnel uh, in the lead up to the new season, but Declan, you're well placed, of course, to offer an insight into to life at Sligo Rovers, and it's a club that did so well last season, but significantly they've lost players who were so important to them last year. Yeah, I mean, a good season last year, Sligo Rovers um, qualifying for Europe again, so that brings in a bit of revenue to the club, um, and it obviously helps the budget to recruit players. But you're absolutely right, had a good season, and even within the good season, we lost seven players. And notably, obviously, Johnny Kenny, the striker that went to Celtic and um, transferred across, and also John Mahan, the centre uh, back that went to St Johnson's well for, uh, I think, I think we're roughly in the 100,000 figures. So that's a revenue, obviously, the Sligo Rovers got, but they've lost two key players and probably two of the best players that they had uh, playing last year. Obviously, one, one defensively and one attacking, and that that's that can be hard to replace. They've lost seven players in total, and. Most of those players are in the top end of the pitch, and you look at Ryan DeFries has gone, up to Johnny Kenny, uh, John Mahan, Walter Figueroa has gone, Andrew Wright, Romeo Park, and Melvin Lorenzo has gone as well. So lost a lot of quality there. And similar to all the rest of the team we discussed there in regards to players coming in, and there's very little time to bed those players in. So it'll be very interesting to see how the teams that are bringing a lot of players and how they kick off at the start of the season. And, and, and that bedding in period and how long will it take because that could be a problem for a lot of teams. Uh, you know, overall, last season has to go down as <clears> pretty <throat> successful for Sligo Rovers, Declan. Although, when you look at the league table and they end up like they were a full 21 points behind the eventual champion Shamrock Rovers, but they still finished third and they still qualified for Europe. So plenty of positives to take from that. I think so. They started off very well last year compared to the year before, where they started off very poorly. And then we had the COVID break two years ago, and then they came good and got into Europe. Um, last year, they started off very well and eventually just creeped over the line. And Derry pushed them hard, um, obviously, for that third spot. But then Derry got in themselves through uh, the FAI Cup. Um, um, so that's, you know, so it's interesting to see. And Derry had a terrible start, and they were well behind Sligo after seven or eight matches um, when Rory Higgins would have came in and got in and as manager of Derry City. So they, they've done obviously remarkable well to get that close and then obviously qualify for Europe for Derry as well. So yeah, listen, it's interesting to see how it'll, it'll pan out. Um, obviously, they'll be looking off to get off to a good start again um, to probably get to the second round of the European competition, the Europa, Europa League would be a definite achievement. But that's obviously brings in, in the region of about a half a million to the club, um, which is a massive mon money and funding for the club to, to extend both the facilities and their infrastructure um, and obviously bring new players in as well. So it, those kind of things. So they'll be looking to start really well and, and can they get potentially going to a better cup run than last year they were out in the first round against Cork City, which is very disappointing for them. Um, we're looking for a good cup run and obviously try to qualify for Europe will be the goal next year for Sligo Rovers. 
And Gavin, what do you make of the, the, the start then that Sligo Rovers are facing as we get the new season underway? They're at home to Bowes in their first match. After that, it's away to St. Pat's and then away to Derry City. So a Northwest Derby very, very early in their campaign. And, you know, every club will be saying it, but Sligo <clears> will be looking to get off to a good start, I'm sure. They will, surely. That's that's the clubs that are in around Sligo's area of the, of, the, of the league. And you expect them to be challenging again, maybe for, for the top half and, and the top half and going for Europe. So the, the, the Derry Cities and the St. Pats and the Bows are the clubs that are that are, that are they're really they want to be beaten, but again, it's an unknown quantity. If they have a turn, turnover of seven players, probably it's the seven players are all starting 11 players, really, and really good players. Um, you don't know what you're going to get from them, and as, as Declan alluded to there, um, there's very little bed and time, very little work, a couple of friendlies. Probably the first game of the season might be the first time that he gets his full team out, so it's very difficult to see how it's going to start in any of the games. Um, but Sligo's probably as much as any, they're, they're an unknown quantity. They certainly are. Well, Derry City then are another club then, Gavin, who have uh, seen a lot of changes in terms of uh, personnel within their squad. And, you know, we could, we could go through the, the, the new signings. We can do that in, in, in a minute or two. But one thing that stood out as well was the addition of Alan Reynolds as, as assistant manager uh, under Rory Higgins this year. Some people suggesting that that's a, a real key appointment. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they they hadn't really gotten an assistant manager last year. I know Critaro was there, but they still they still were a bit short. So it was obvious that, that Rory was earmarking Alan to come in and uh, and do that job. He's he's a wealth of experience. He's under the Irish under twenty ones. He's got all the coaching badges. So it, and by all accounts around the dressing room, all he's very good with players. So look, it looks like they're really happy with that addition and with the players they brought in. It's very interesting times with there. And and of course, I mean. Financially well backed as well, Gavin. Well organised off the field at, at Derry City, and that has perhaps allowed Rory Higgins to, you know, to delve into the transfer market and make some important additions. Yeah, big time. It's it's exciting times. We we were in with Cock Hall in the Brandywell last Sunday, and they were, they were there. Um, the, some of the players and, and the management team and speaking to them, and and they are there. It is exciting times. I, I watched the game a friendly against Institute two weeks ago. And the likes of Patchen and Michael Duffy looked a class above everything in the pitch. They really were sharp looking. Um, um, Fats didn't play that day. They've got they've looked Shane McElhinney, who sent from Harps, looked actually a lot fitter, a lot leaner. And they've they've wealth of talent, and they will. I have no doubt in my mind they will be up there challenging this season. Declan, would you agree with that thought of of Gavin's that that Derry City now have the you know the the, the strength and depth there? That can allow them to perhaps kick on. Last year, what did the finish? Uh, Fourth, <clears> just in behind Sligo Rovers. So, you know, some might say well placed to challenge Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, for me, um, with the quality of players they brought in, I don't see anybody getting close to to the uh, Shamrock Rovers. Only themselves. Um, they brought in players with top end of the pitch that scores goals, can produce that moment of magic when maybe things are a bit tight, uh, and that can be the difference sometimes in, in games that are difficult, especially away from home. And, you know, Michael Duffy, obviously, Will Patching, as you say, I mean, he scored a lot of goals for them um, when he was in loan for the first half of the season between penalty kicks and free kicks. Yeah, Patrick McElhenney as well. Um, you know, if you can keep him fully fit, he's probably been even lucky with injuries in the last couple of years. He hasn't played as many games as he probably would liked. And if they can keep him fit, he be, can be a key player and just that bit of magic and just produce something out of nothing. And that's what you're looking for to win games, maybe when you haven't played so well. Um, especially away from home, but uh, for me, it's, it's Shamrock Rovers and Jerry City and whatever one of those two can come out on top. Um, and I would presume as well that, as you mentioned, the financial backing they have, if things are going really well um, come July, there's, there'll be no problem with them spending a few pounds again to, to maybe bring in a bit more quality, uh, especially maybe a striker or something like that. So it'll be interesting to see. Looking forward to the season um, and how they progress. Obviously, there's extra pressure now on Rory as well. You've got better players in, far bigger budget than he had last year and that brings extra pressure so you've got to make sure you, you start off really well and um they already have a, have a difficult start as well and yeah listen really quality um but for me it's shamrock overs and Derry city and the key ingredient for the most of those clubs is they've lost very little players so they've run in a good quality and, and real settled team so um, for me it's between the two of them yeah, and, and Rory Higgins came in last year, very early in the campaign. Remember, he replaced Declan Devine. So perhaps it was a case of seeing out the 2021 season and then maybe, you know, stamping his own, you know, authority on things and getting in the players that he wanted to bring in. So 
uh, that might uh, add that little bit of pressure now because all of a sudden it's his team and it's 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 his setup. Yeah, well, once once your budget increases and you bring in better quality players, there's extra pressure on the manager. Um, he done a marvelous job last year coming in after a very bad start that Derry had. He went away in the first match, beat Sligo, up in Sligo, then away to Bowes, beat Bowes, and I think he won the next game at home as well. So this is a great start for him. Um, and we were this time last year, um, in general, we were just chatting. Sligo or Fan uh, Harps had a stronger squad than Derry City, and how that has totally turned around this year. So it just shows you how the quality of players that he's added in. And it's not just one to 11. Derry City now have got a, a one to 18. So there's seven or eight players that will can come into that team, and it doesn't weaken them in any capacity at all. So yeah, it's it's a it's it's a great way to be for a manager having that quality beside you, but it brings extra pressure as well. And Gavin, the Derry City supporters, they they like to be entertained. They like to see their team score goals and win matches in style. Scoring goals was an issue for them last year, but I'm sure the fans will have a big, big part to play uh, in helping Derry City in their in this year's campaign. Yeah, there's as I said, there's a lot of excitement. Uh, by all accounts, their season tickets have been sold out. Um, the, the, that friendly I was at it against Institute, there was probably two thousand people at a friendly. So there is interest and there is a, a lot of excitement. And again, you're going and, and and what they've brought in is actually really good quality local players as well. So the, the the local people will get behind that. And as Declan said, there if they start well, and it's important that they do start well, you know, the, 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 they will be hard to stop. And I, I'm in the same belief. I think Shamrock Rovers are probably too strong for everybody, but. The only club that's probably going to come close could be Derry this season as well. Okay, then. Well, we'll move from Sligo and from Derry City, and we'll we'll <coughs> turn our attentions to all things Van Harps for for the next few minutes. And I was just preparing for today's program and, and looking back on last season. And I suppose the the big talking point was the fact that Harps needed as much as forty four points in order to survive in the in the Premier Division this season. A massive total. Um, there's no, there's no doubt about that. Um, one would hope that the team that's going to avoid finishing in the playoff spot or even automatic relegation spot this year won't need that total. But what was the reason for that last year, Declan? I mean, it was a strange season on so many fronts. Yeah, it's hard to understand how you needed so many points, but I, I suppose it, it showed the quality of the teams. Um, I suppose if you take out long for out of that equation, the quality of the teams around. The bottom half of the table, you obviously had draw it in the next season. Harps are the next season as well down there. Um, you had Longford were probably relegated, I suppose, halfway through the season as such in regards didn't pick up too many points. Um, you know, and then you had obviously Waterford down there as well. So not a lot of points. A lot of teams got a lot of wins. And I remember us discussing before, Jim, where we said that for any team to, to go and play in the playoffs, um, we, I thought that they'd have a good chance of winning because they weren't coming in in bad form. They're coming in after, you know, a lot of wins. And then, lo and behold, you should, you should be then go and, and beat Waterford in the playoffs. So it's just, you just never know, do you, how things are going to pan out. But it's, a, it's um, I think just the quality of the teams were a lot better last year um, down at the end of the table. And it'll be interesting to see who's going to be down there fighting. Um, and I would say, obviously, Harps will be down there. Draw will be down there. You know, UCD will be down there. Shelburne. Have had a bit of quality, and Damien Dolphin will be in this, uh, on, uh, interesting to see how he energizes them and how they play throughout the whole season. Um, but he's got good quality players, and so it's going to be very interesting. Um, and then I mean, there's times there's also you you know the, the teams that were the so-called better teams were, were in that as well. Bowls were in there for a long, long time, and they pulled away near the end. You know, so you just never know who's going to be down there. But um, it's going to be interesting. I'm really looking forward to the season. In some ways, Declan Harps were perhaps the victims of their own success because they, you know, they played so well during the season. They uh, enjoyed so many good results, and they had some very good individual players uh, throughout the campaign. And those players then all of a sudden became quite attractive to some of the so-called bigger clubs within the league. And you know, shortly after the season ended and the weeks that followed, Declan, you know, you could. You could understand why Harps supporters were suddenly finding themselves frustrated at seeing so many players going through the exit door and leaving the club. Yeah, that's the difficult part, you know, from a um, point of view of, of supporters watching it. And you obviously have Tunde that kind of lit up the season there um, from the halfway mark for Harps. And, and then anything he did against, he caused them real problems. Adam Foley obviously was excellent for the first third of the season and scored a lot of goals, you know. and. John Boyd as well pitched in with goals. So, you know, we lost 
players on the top end of the pitch, and we probably have lost in the region of about 30 goals. And that's very hard to replace, you know. And as you look on from it, you know, I wonder at times, and I know there's been a few clubs that have lost a lot of players, but there has to be something done in regards to, to planning ahead and strategic thinking in, in regards to these players being, being lost because, you know, you can't keep pulling players from all over all over the world pretty much into the squad and, and, and make it work. And sometimes that's going to go against you. And I, I just think at times there needs to be a bit more long-term thinking from a point of view of, of an Hart Football Club and, and looking at players and trying to tie them down to, to longer contracts, similar to what Derry City have implemented in the last two or three years where they're given two-year contracts. Yeah, they might turn around and say, well, we, we couldn't give those contracts to these players uh, halfway through the season because they didn't know the outcome of where they'd be, whether they'd be in the first division or whether they'd be in the Premier League. Regardless, for me, there's core amount of players that need to be there next year, regardless of the first division and the Premier League. And it's definitely something that clubs in the League of Ireland need to start identifying the players they need to keep, give them long-term contracts. And even if those players are, are, are um, you get relegated and you're in the first division, they're still an asset to the club. And, you know, we had a ton on a two-year contract. We probably got 20, 30,000 for them this year. So he would have been an asset. And it's something that both Harps and other clubs around the area need to look at the long-term planning and planning for the future. Okay, interesting. Well, Gavin, one player that, that you know know very well from your time of playing with him at, at Cockhill Celtic is Mark Coyle. So he's one of the players that uh, that left Harps this year. Supporters, you know, might be wondering, could he have stayed alone? Others might say, well, he's getting the chance now of, of uh, a professional contract at, at Shelburne. Uh, and it's a chance that rarely comes comes along for, for local players. Yeah, it was a tough one for Mark. I know me speaking to him, it was a tough, tough decision, and he, he, he thought long and hard about it. Um, he's a young lad. He, he's, he's, he had a fantastic season last year. He really stepped up to the mark. He's, he's been at Van Harps now maybe three seasons, and and at, at the beginning of COVID and stuff, he was debating giving up senior football, and then he had such a good season, he went back and done really well. And obviously Shelburne come in and it was tough and as a young lad and, and he had the opportunity to go full time and test himself and see how well he could do. He's seen his friend Georgia Kelly doing so well and, and probably that sort of swayed his decision as well. Um, you can't blame him and, and players should want to play at the best level and, and push themselves the best they can and, 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 and he can always come back as well. But look, it, it, was a, it was a difficult choice for him, but look, I wish him all the best and I hope he does really well, you know. Yeah, we wish him well because I, I'm sure Harps fans will, will give him a good welcome when he comes back and uh, to Balbuffet in the colours of Shelburne, Gavin. Uh, the the players then that have come in, um, I mean, we we were looking at them um, off air and and you know, I mean, it's a it's a it's a gather up of, of players from from here, there, and everywhere, really, isn't it? And I mean, the the big question is, you know, how does Ollie manage to do it? This is something that he seems to be able to do season in, season out, and he's he's come up with the goods again. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable, and it's 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 a credit to him. But at the same time, at times you feel sorry for him having to do that. As Declan said there about pl players signing two and three year contracts, like I don't know if when's the last time Harps give out a contract like that. And I know the, the situation is you no, know, you can't do it because you're taking a chance on a lot of these players coming in as well. You're not seeing them, you're not knowing them how they will react. They're loving them, by the way, how they react to to the League of Ireland playing at Fan Park, you know. Like obviously tuned him in hindsight and boys like that you would you should have had in long term contacts but when he first came in he wasn't he wasn't setting the world light no it took it took a while to get settled so it's it's hard and it's difficult and and I say the way Van Harps are as a club you know it's been like that for years it's sort of handy mouth and and in a way in, in terms of the structures and all so like ideally they get the structures right and they're doing what Derry's doing now I think Derry's reserve team on their team there's they've actually signed seven or eight of them on two and three year contracts in the last couple of weeks which is great for the young lads and great for the club so they are sellable assets as well so fun harps really need to get that right some way um in, ter in terms of of the players are coming on so it's a it's a total on the one that's there's probably seven or eight players from last year's squad all good players and they had a very good squad last year but we're going to Fun Park next Friday night and, and we're all anxious to, to see what, what these players are like. Um, by all accounts, some of them in training have been very good, but again, it's how they react, how they bet in, how they settle is a huge question. All right. Well, Declan, you have seen Harps in action in pre-season. You, you caught the game against Sligo Rovers and I know you were you're pretty impressed by what you saw. Yeah, um, I seen them up in the showground, yeah, and I uh, thought they played uh, 
were very well on the, on the night and they made a lot of substitutions so it was hard to gauge um exactly who was playing because we didn't really get a team sheet as such but the overall performance was actually quite good and i thought they played better than sligo and they passed the ball really well you know so um again summer to gavin it's it's an interesting one for uh supporters because we all kind of want to go on, on friday night and see who's playing for starters and then see what sort of qualities come in I mean, I think there's nine players in total and that's a lot of players to come in um, and try to bed them in and see what sort of quality they have so that, that that's the interesting part you know and and hopefully uh, we can get three or four of those that'll be uh, exciting um and we'll obviously score a few goals for us and cause a lot of problems and and, and and get us over the line in a lot of games so that'll be interesting as well yeah so um i'm looking forward to it um but i, I just don't know enough about them to, to, to even to talk about them so it's, a, it's an interesting one but i'm looking uh, to hopefully see them in action and we can talk about them afterwards after the first match uh, next friday night and and the players that we do know uh declan from having watched them in the league of ireland uh, bastian Heary, bags of experience regan donlan has been with harps before as has jesse devers and uh, Connor Tourish comes in from from Letterkenny Rovers, and I suppose uh, Gavin Mulraney as well. You would know him from from uh, down your part of the world. A good goalkeeper, and he's getting his chance now at senior level. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? it's great for for Gavin to be getting this opportunity. Obviously, um, he played um, underage um, county teams um, when he was younger, obviously, and and plays. He's involved in the army. I think he plays in the international Irish army team as well. So that's where maybe with the pass crossed. Yeah, um, to be getting an opportunity. Similar to, to probably Mark Anthony from a point of view, getting it probably a wee bit later in, in their life, you know, and, and um, having really come through the, the academy structures and such. But it's it's an opportunity for him, and it'll be interesting to see how, how it pans out. And you know, I presume Mark Anthony will probably be number one, and, and, and Gavin will be number two. That's what I'm trying to think. But it's an opportunity for him. Um, I suppose uh, Bastian uh, Henry, we did see him up in uh, in the showgrounds, and I thought he was really good. And he, He's a kind of technical gifted player, plays in that 10 position and, and likes the, the everything. He, he wants everything coming through him. So um, obviously he played with Derry City last year as well. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how, how, how he conducts things. But he's one of those players that's a wee bit of quality and he likes to, to be heavily involved in all attacking sort of maneuvers, you know. So that'll be really interesting. And obviously Regan Donnelly didn't play that much with Sligo Rovers last year had a few injuries uh, left back we've obviously seen him alive during a few times and he's a very good passer of the ball um he delivers really good uh, from set plays as well so uh, it'll be interesting to see how he performs um obviously in, in the left back position um we lost obviously Siddiqui in, in the center half position uh, obviously they've put in a few center backs as well so it'll be interesting to see what sort of quality there they are as well um so yeah I'm looking forward to it um I, you know it's it's a, it's a real interesting one and, and you know just as gavin mentioned earlier you just don't know what you're going to get with players coming in but hopefully we get a bit of quality in. um and if, if you know we have as, as lucky as we have a tundi will be will be more than happy okay well gavin i know that you will be uh, well aware of the capabilities of, of connor tourist the the defender that's signed from the rickney rovers and I, you know, I put it to him when I got chatting to him during the week that, you know, perhaps he could look at the example set by Ryan Rainey, who has mo moved to Harps ahead of last season from Bonaghy United. Took a little while to, to find his feet at, at Finn Park, but once he did get going, he really was impressive. Yeah, he, it's exactly what Connor had been for. Ryan, Ryan went up last year, good player, good footballer at intermediate level, and he what he caught. He, in fairness, he was patient and, and, and but, but his time and there was t there was rumors and talks that you no know, come the the June transfer on the July transfer on he was going to leave but I'm glad he stayed I'm sure he's glad he stayed as well because he got a run of games in and scored a few goals and looks 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 a good uh, probably an a long starter for the start of this season in terms of Connor very similar I played against Connor loads of times played with him and representative squads a very very good footballer a very good reader of the game technically a very good first centre half. Probably the only question is his, his size and, and, and stuff and, uh, to go in the League of Ireland. But look, if he adjusts and does well, he definitely has the ability. And I know I know the step up's huge from intermediate level to the to the Premier Division. But at the same time, look, he, he will get chances this year with the squad and, and, and hopefully it goes well for him. OK, and speaking of centre-half, then the new assistant manager in Balbafay, Gavin, is, is another Gavin, Gavin Dykes. I, I was trying to work out... Uh, is he a former teammate of yours? But I'm sure he's he's someone you know well. Yeah, I played with him, Declan and Gavin were the two centre halves at the time. <laughs> Very good partnership. Declan read the game and could play, and Gavin would just head it anywhere. 
Um, very good defender. He actually gave me my debut in the League of Ireland when he was manager as well. Um, so look, I, I know him for years and years. Um, knows a lot about football. I was actually surprised to see him come back in, but he was. I think he was at Warren Point, was he? Um, he was, yeah. So, yeah. So I was surprised when when he came back in, but obviously all he was looking for somebody with a lot of experience and, and to come in and give him a hand and, and and like there's no better man. He knows a lot about the League of Ireland, you know. He certainly does, Declan. We came across Gavin Dykes uh, last year on our travels. He he was doing a bit of media work during the you know when Sligo Rovers games. So um, he he's been watching League of Ireland football. He knows what it's about, and I get the feeling that he's looking forward to this new challenge. Yeah, and no, I have been chatting him. Um, I bump into him every now and again, but yeah, he was at Warren Point. Um, I think just a lot of travelling um, from Sligo the whole way to Warren Point for training and matches, and probably it's uh, closer location obviously Balba Faye he's been there before both as a player and, and as a manager as well and as assistant coach to Ollie so he knows what it's all about and uh, the last time we were there they had a good relationship as well so it's, it's probably a no-brainer for Ollie to take him in after losing losing Paul Hegarty um, and so he's been in so many experiences as well and and so yeah it'll be interesting to see how, how that pans out throughout the whole season um, but probably some of the players or some or some of the coaches with some of ideas as well so yeah um, but a good addition, Gavin's highly organised, um, very good in the dressing room from a point of view, motivating players, but also um, he's, he's uh, entertaining and good fun as well to have around the dressing room. So when things aren't going good, sometimes you need that wee bit of humour to um, keep everybody happy. But yeah, it's a good addition to, to the staff. Okay, so that's one of the, the changes in terms of uh, managerial, new faces in the management front um, at the various clubs and um, there are changes as well elsewhere. Shelburne, perhaps the big one. Damien Duff in charge there. We have a new manager at Dundalk. We have a new manager at St. Pat's. Uh, new manager at Drogheda too. So a lot of changes, Declan. I suppose D the Damien Duff one is one that most people will be keen to keep an eye on just to see how he manages in, in the League of Ireland. Yeah, listen, a, a brilliant recruitment, obviously, for Shelburne Football Club. And I think it, it uh, also for the profile of the league, um, having him be been so successful over in Glasgow Celtic um, with Neil Lennon there as well as number two. So and the fact that he gave that up, he was obviously involved with the international team as well and stepped away from that. So um, loads of ability and to have somebody of that stature and profile um, and coaching ability, obviously, and, and the experience of playing in the Premier League and winning the Premier League. And it's just, you know, it's, it's really good. And, you know, I'm not surprised that Mark Hoy, when he got the opportunity to go up to Shelburne, because what an opportunity it is to work with somebody of that quality. And um, the players around him will only benefit. I know that he was heavily involved with Shamrock Rovers on the 15th team and then Shelburne's on the 17th last year. And the one thing that you hear coming back out from all reports is it's, it's um, the amount of time, dedication he puts to the job. And he'll be expecting the same back from his staff. Uh, and the players, so there will be a big improvement in the players, and hopefully Mark Hoy will reap the rewards of that um, and become a better player as well. But yeah, listen, exciting times up in Shelburne. Um, you know, they, they obviously um, got promoted, and they went for a new manager, and listen, he'll give the, them quality and, and the contacts that he'll have as well across the water. He'd no doubt bring an extra quality when needed. Yeah, and they, they only lost two games last season, Declan, on their way to winning the, the first division title in style. Last in the Premier Division in 2020, that was the year that Cork City finished bottom of the table. Shelburne went down then, finishing second from bottom. Um, I'm sure the hope is, and the, they will be confident that they can perhaps do a little better this year. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think he's brought in good quality, you know. Um, you know, so it's obviously Mark Coyle and, and Sean Boyle would be two players that, that knows the league um sean boy will probably pop in with goals throughout the whole season mark coyle good defensive midfielder as well and yeah so it's um i think they've uh, a Durbin as well then they signed him from longford so um similar to marks so it'll be interesting to see will two of them play together um in the midfield um some of sort of players but yeah listen it's it's there's no doubt about it i think he's a great addition for for the league and, and for shelburne um and I, i'm looking forward to seeing how they play and what tactics uh, he brings you know and it's, he's very tactically minded and he likes a lot of rotation in the middle of the park and he likes offensive players like like himself that was very attacking minded and, and scored a lot of goals obviously so it, it'll be very interesting but it's a great addition and it just brings things you know makes things far more exciting for for all the teams for all the spectators in the league and it's just it'll be interesting to see how they kick off um, and how they go 
and, and where you know where would he push them to? Will they will they stay around the bottom or will they be up up near the middle to the top of the table? So that's going to be very interesting. But you just don't know from all the, the teams that are involved. You just don't know who's going to be the teams that are down the bottom and who's going to be teams uh, that are going to be in the middle of the, middle of the table slash up the top end of the table. Yeah, well, Shelburne kick off the, the new season with a home game against St. Pat's on Friday night. For Harps, it's a home fixture against Drogheda United, Gavin, and that will give uh, local football fans a, a chance to see one of the uh, former Harps players, Keith Cowan, in action with his new club. Yeah, Keith, Keith got a move there. I know he was at Dungannon, um, and he, he was playing, playing, and doing, must have been doing very well there. So it's, it's, a, it's a big move for him at this stage of his career, but obviously... Still believes he played that level, and 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 the manager Kevin Doherty also believes he bring that experience to the squad and that leadership qualities and all. So it'll be a big night for Keith to play against Harps on Friday night if he's selected as well. So it'll be it's going to be a tough season for Drogheda as, as it is for Harps, and I think the key key in Friday night is for the two of them is, is who gets the best start. And significantly, Gavin. Harps didn't manage to beat Drogheda United last season, and they were the only side that they that they failed to beat. Um, they could do with a good start on Friday night, and that would mean putting that uh, to record that record to bed. Yeah, definitely. That's an interesting stat there. Now I didn't know that. Um, Drogheda started last season flying, so they did, and, and they obviously dipped away towards the end of the season, dropped down. But um, for Harps to have beaten every other team bar Drogheda last season, it showed how well they've done. You know, and and this season, I I, I do get a feeling that the, the likes of Drogheda, the UCDs, the Harps will be the teams that will be down there. Obviously, it'll be a surprise package within that, but you know, it's it's important not to not to lose in Friday night for sure. Well, Harps and Drogheda finished actually level on points at the end of last season, Declan, and only four points behind a Dundalk team who promised so much, but really found the going tough. I would imagine they will fancy uh, putting things right this campaign. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting one, obviously. Um, you know, change of manager as well, and, and that went down. And there was a lot of, I suppose, didn't go down well. And it was some pats. Um, but yeah, listen, it's an, O'Donnell obviously going going back to his old club where he played and captained and won one league title. So um, probably a no brainer for him to go and do that one. Um, they've lost a lot of players. Um, they lost, you know, there was a lot, they lost the quality of, of three or four players from Dundalk to Derry City. Um, but yeah, listen, it's. Interesting one. They obviously have a good budget. Um, he has signed players on, and players on loan as well. Um, they were definitely disappointing last year for sure. They just didn't perform to the levels with the quality of players that they had. Um, they obviously brought in a lot of foreign players as well at um, the start of the season. It just didn't happen for them either for one reason or other. And some of their star players didn't perform throughout the whole season. So it's an interesting one to see how they're going to be. Will they be better than last year? I presume they probably will be better than last year. Um, I think. And with O'Donnell going in there as the manager, I, I think that'll that'll make them a bit better, a bit more professional. Um, so we belong settling with managers coming and going there, and, and coaches coming and going. So this year they'll have a wee bit of more stability. I expect them to be better, but I don't think they expect them to be up pushing um, Shamrock Rovers or Derry City. Okay. Well, before we wrap things up, and I ask you for your for your predictions for the season ahead, Declan, we might just touch on one of the other clubs, uh, UCD. I think it's. Uh, we des- you know, they deserve a, a little bit of attention here because not only are they one of the newly promoted sides, but there's a, a strong Donegal contingent there too. Yeah, listen, great to see the, the lads um, usually getting up, obviously. I mean, you know, you mentioned Michael Gallagher, obviously, came through the academy, um, played along with seven under 17s. Jack Keeney, that came through the academy, was with um, Sligo Rovers and, and Sligo Rovers first team, Liam Kerrigan as well, came through Sligo, and, and those players can let up the league much as, you know, uh, Last year for for and top were top players in UCD. Um, it's a big ask this year for them to come up, um, but they are exciting. Um, they will have plenty of energy. Um, they will have pace and athleticism all over them, and it'll be interesting to see how they pan out. There's going to be times throughout the whole season they'll probably get stretched, and um, if they have two or three players out injured or suspension, they probably might not have a squad like other teams. But they'll be a welcome addition, um, and they, they've done well every time they played against uh, Van Harp, say their home or away, and. That'll be an interesting one because all those games will be six pointers for sure. And but yeah, listen, good good contention, Donegal lads. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing how they perform at that level. 
OK, well, they kick off their campaign with a trip to play Shamrock Rovers. Uh, that game at 8 o'clock, just like Harps against Drogheda on Friday night, an 8 o'clock start as well. The other two games then on Friday night, Dundalk host Derry City and Shells taking on St. Pat's, both kicking off at 7.45. And we shouldn't forget the First Division, which also starts this Friday night. There are three games, Athlone Town at home to uh, Waterford, Bray play Cork City, and it's Wexford against Treaty. Then on Saturday night, Sligo host Bowes at 7.45 at the showgrounds. And the game in the first division is Longford Town against Cove. Boys, is anybody going to challenge Shamrock Rovers? Uh, or are they going to win the league for a third season on the bounce? Declan? Um, yeah, listen, I, I, as discussed earlier, I think Derry is probably you know, the only team that have the quality and depth of players um, that will come close to Shamrock Rovers. Will they push them? I think they'll push them for sure. Um, and make it close, but near the end, I think Shamrock Rovers might pull away just from the fact that they've signed Jack Byrne, who has scored over 12 or 14 goals two seasons ago from midfield, and that just brings an extra dimension to them. And, and you know, they've had the players on top end of the pitch that will come in with 10 goals here and 10 goals there, and they just scored enough goals overall. But there was times throughout the whole season where they, they weren't convincing. But this year, they're going to have to be because I think they're actually going to push them hard um, for that number one spot. And at the other end of the table, Declan, I mean, uh, is it too predictable to suggest that uh, perhaps UCD might be the team to struggle? Yeah, um, you know, Gavin mentioned there, it's, it's how you start. Um, and they'll be looking to get off to a, a positive start and get a wee bit of confidence. And um, yeah, listen, probably Shamrock will arrive. UCD will be down there, I think. Um, Shelburne might be down there at the start, and depending on how they, they they start off, and uh, you know, so Harps will be down there. I think Toronto will be down there after losing their manager Tim Clancy. They've lost players as well. They went the opposite direction to St. Pat's. Kevin Doherty's come in there, and I don't see any extra quality that he's added. So that'll be interesting to see how Toronto goes. So I think you know, between the four of those, it, it'll be down there fighting, fighting off um, relegation and the playoffs. spot. Okay then. Well, Gavin, what about yourself? What's your thoughts on what might happen? Pretty similar, I suppose, and, and I don't think it, it is as predictable as we're making it sound, but I, I do think Shamrock Govers will, will win it, and I think it'll, it'll really be down to themselves to lose it rather than another team pushing on and being way better. I think last season they, they won the league without being playing to their levels, I don't think. I think they, they, won, it, they won it by just scraping games and getting results when they weren't playing well. I think this year the step up is, is Jack Byrne coming in as top 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 player for the League of Ireland. So he 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 he'll add a lot to the squad. They've they've goals in midfield. They've they've international defenders in their squad. You know, an international goalkeeper and Almanis from Northern Ireland. So you know they've 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 got squad and they, and they've got stability in their squad, which are not changing like other clubs, six, seven, eight players over over the over the winter break. So I think they're going to be hard to stop. And um, as again. Both Derry, we know what they're going to bring, and and come July in the transfer window, if they're there thereabouts, they they can add a lot to their squad, uh, and and will challenge. But I think they'll just be a, maybe a year, a season too early for them to to push on and win a league. After that, it's just a bunch of clubs: um, Sligo, Bowes, and Pats, possibly Dundalk at the bottom end of that. No, but it's it's, it's sort of the way it is, and I think I think the bottom three or four is. A, a, in my opinion, Drahada probably are looking the weakest. Harps, we just don't know. But with Ali and with his record in the league and, and whatever, you know they're going to be there, thereabouts. No, but they, they, they have enough experience there with, with that to, to maybe get a playoff or whatever. So UCD, speaking to William about them, William Connors, his manager, he's, he's, they're, they're set up with their professionalism, the facilities they have. They'll be as fit and organised as any team in the league. They'll be will be buzzing. He says they have a lot of quality players. Come come July, some of them guys will be finished college there, and maybe the bigger clubs will be like to call and stuff might come in and take them. So that's a danger. But I could see UCD doing quite well and having a bright start to the league. And again, Shelburne total unknown. So look, it's it's pretty similar to Declan in terms of I think Shamrock Rovers and probably uh, Drahada Harps to fight it out to the bottom end. You know. Okay then, well gentlemen, we'll leave it at that. We're all looking forward to the new season. Really enjoyed the chat this evening. Uh, Harps against Drogheda. We'll have uh, full match commentary live here on Highland Radio on Friday night from shortly before kickoff. Declan, you're on commentary with myself and Gavin will be uh, will be uh, together in the commentary box, I'm sure, during the season as well. So we look forward to that. In the meantime, thanks for 
your contribution to this evening's programme and thanks to Oshin Kelly who produced as well. We're looking forward to the start of the League of Ireland season. It all gets underway this coming Friday night. My thanks to you for, for watching. Uh, from myself, Jeremy Doherty, good evening.